Hey, thanks for watching. In this video, supermarket refrigeration techs Thomas, Brad, and Eric give you a peek into their service bags so that you can get a sense of tools that they use every day, how they use them. I always like these short little videos so you can actually get a peek at how other people do their jobs in different segments of the industry. So if you're not a supermarket tech, I think you'll find it enjoyable. Hello, uh, I'm Thomas. I've been doing commercial refrigeration for almost 30 years now. Um, what we've done is we've set out basically my 90% bag and gauges and my impact. This is basically what gets me through 90% of my calls. Shy of like a compressor change or a really specific call, this does pretty much everything for me. There are some little additions. Uh, you'd probably want to add a couple of things you'd probably want to take out, but this really works for me. This keeps me from the two or three trips to the truck. There's pretty much nothing I can't get accomplished with these tools. Sometimes it could be more specific, but this is the bare minimum in my opinion. And uh, I think we're going to lay it out and I'll talk a little bit about what each tool benefits me, how it benefits me. Okay. So everything's uh, laid out and most of you probably going to know what everything's used for, but we'll just go through. Basically multimeter, nothing fancy, um, nothing that I'm worried about getting damaged in the brain. Keep two service wrench or two uh, large crescent wrenches, just one to back up what I'm wrenching the other one for. Service wrenches, large and small, small crescent wrench. Comes in handy for just little valves here and there. Basic two electrical tools and my strippers, that's basically all I use for electrical. That and my trusty Klein, I use for a hammer also. Channel locks, those are a must. And that pretty much gets through all the wrenches. Nut drivers, I keep pretty much from quarter inch all the way up to half inch. Sometimes I'll grab a 9 16 if I know I'm going to use it. But the quarter and 5 16 obviously are the uh, prime ones. Allen wrenches, just keep, I, I rarely work anything hot anymore. I'm old, I'm scared, so nothing's really insulated. These, uh, I like the, uh, the rounded ends for tightening electrical lugs. What else? Electrical pliers. My trusty eighth inch uh, Allen wrench for fan blades. My uh, ratchet wrench set. Those are awesome. Those are extremely handy. And then I keep the set of just uh, sockets for my impact. Good flashlight. That's my one inch wrench that comes in handy for a lot of valves. That's my pretty much Centronic wrench on the uh, Copeland compressors. That's basically all I use it for, but that's the reason it's there. Obviously set of gauges, my different tapes and Teflon tape, face tapes, a couple magnets, and then my meter actually clips on the outside of the other bag. Um, I wish it was on the inside of the bag, but it does me. And that's basically it. Like I said, there could be a lot of substitutions and additions, subtractions, but this has really made it for me for the last 30 years. And I don't, I don't think I plan on changing much. My name is Brad Kronk. I work for Kalos Refrigeration. I am a lead trainer here at Kalos for supermarket refrigeration. We're just going over today some of the tools that I bring in for a first time diagnosis on typical service calls we get for Publix. What you can see here is just my basic bag setup. Typically, uh, I wear a belt, so I clip in certain tools like uh, my drill and stuff, so they're not in my bag, but I carry my gauges, all my tools and a uh, little tool pouch here, drill, little uh, camera that I stick in my pocket, and then my phone. So we'll go over all these and kind of tell you a little bit more about what I have in here. Okay, so this is uh, basically we're going to go through and show you everything that was in this bag. So for my basic tools, from my experience, you're going to want to have a few uh, adjustable wrenches in varying sizes. So I have a uh, too small, too big here. Those will, I mean, pretty much get you through a lot of different variances for valves, closing stuff, all that good stuff. You're gonna wanna down, uh, downsize your screwdrivers typically to where you're using 10 in ones, or in this case, this is an eight in one. So, you know, you got the quarter inch, five sixteenths, little screwdriver. This actually controls screwdriver for this particular model, which will get you into the uh, all of our E2 CPC controllers use very small screws. 
So that'll let you work on those. I have a nut driver set here. This is uh, again, another multi-combo deal where it has multiple tools in a small package. So that way you're not taking in a whole nut driver set into the store if you can get away with just this. Over here, I have a pair of wire strippers, a pair of wire crimps, especially uh, make sure that you have a non -in or an insulated crimper, not just a non-insulated. Most of the uh, things we work on here at uh, supermarket refrigerations that have insulation around the uh, crimps that you make and if you use the non-insulation one, it'll actually pierce those. Another thing uh, we got, you know, just some random uh, channel locks in here. I, I carry multiples just because sometimes really small spaces to get in there and, and work something out. Down here, I have a 9 16 and a 5 8 wrench. So the reason I only carry those two wrenches is uh, essentially 9 16 is what every compressor head bolt is around that size. The 5 8 that's for the TXV screens, the Q bodies, um, the S -S SQE bodies will all have a 5 8 uh, screen in them. So to remove the screen and put that back on, that's what I use that guy for. I also carry a uh, two service wrenches. This is just a bigger size service wrench for some of the bigger compressors we have. Next thing we go is a new addition to my bag, which has been a flare thermal camera, which I have found not only in electrical applications, but also figuring out how the cases are running in hot gas and even uh, whether or not the check valves failed, stuff like that. This is starting to become a really handy tool that I've been using a lot more often lately. It is a new addition. I haven't fully tested it yet, but so far it's been, it's been pretty handy. Then of course I carry a drill with me. This is a, a, an impact drill. I wouldn't carry a normal drill into the stores because uh, typically the only thing we're going to end up using this for is taking out screws, right? So I also carry a um, assortment of nut drivers and what have you. Um, I found it's really handy to have a couple sockets in half inch and nine sixteenths. Again, that is mainly for our compressors, our Copeland compressors. The half inch will do almost every single filter dryer uh, body that all those bolts are typically half inch. So this will make makes the job way faster. Your customers down less time. So I'll bring that in. Of course, flashlight. Good to have a meter. As much as I say everything here is important, the meter is the most important tool you can have. Always bring a meter in with you. As far as diagnosing goes, it'll go a long way. Another thing that people don't think of, cell phone. You know, this day and age, we work on so many different types of equipment that a lot of times that you're gonna run into stuff that you don't really know. What's going on, maybe the settings that it's supposed to run. So I always consider a cell phone as part of my toolkit because you can call the manufacturer. They typically have good tech support. You can call fellow technicians and uh, as well as looking stuff up on the internet. It comes in handy. It's, it's, it's a valuable tool that a lot of people don't really think of. In commercial refrigeration, you will find a lot of small micro leaks. So I carry a set of uh, Schrader cores and also a set of caps because uh, these don't get put back on all the time. So instead of just trying to remember which ones were missing caps, I can just pull a cap out of my bag and replace it as I go. Last thing we'll just go over is uh, this is a programmer for a uh, fan motor. So Publix has been using programmable fans for about the last two to three years. I do bring this in every time. I don't think it's necessarily needed, but it does come in handy when you run into these fan motors and you're not sure what RPM is set for because uh, you can plug it in and actually see what the fans are currently set up for and if they're correct. And that pretty much wraps up what I bring in to initially diagnose everything. What this does for me is it'll get me through a initial diagnosis of a service call, figuring out what parts I need what I'm going to change, and then I can decide what to bring into the store next. So if it's a big job, of course, I'm going to bring in more tools. If it's a smaller job or just a motor, you know, you just run out to the truck, grab the motor and bring it back in and replace it. But this will get us through all that. Pretty much that's it. Thank you. Hi, this is Eric with Kalos Services and HVAC School. I have not spent as much time in market refrigeration as the other two guys showing off there bags, but I have put together one that's pretty much building on what I've been using just with the more specific stuff we need now for 
market specific applications. This is a uh, tool bag here. It's a tool backpack. And in this side, I try to keep the lighter stuff like the diagnostic stuff because it's further away from my back. Back side, I keep the heavier items here just because it just carries more comfortably that way. Also have some tape and a tape measure on the outside. There's not really a whole lot on the outside. There's the brush, the tape, and a non-contact here. This spot fits earplugs, and I keep some screws in here, some small parts, but I'm gonna lay everything out from the internal pockets. We can talk about what's in it and why. All right, so I got most everything laid out, except for, like I said, there's various rolls of tape here, a tape measure, keep markers and stuff in the side pocket, keep some cable ties in the bag, but everybody knows what those look like, so no need to really pull them. So starting furthest away from me is a lot of the diagnostic stuff that I keep in the outside of the bag or the, the compartment away from me. Got the field piece job link set. Still running a Testo 605i because just haven't upgraded to the field piece yet. I got multimeter, this multi insulated screwdriver. I like to keep this because I got the extended and the various other screwdriver bits. And I find these hold up a lot better than the 11 in ones, which looks like it's not in my bag, but I usually keep, of course I have something missing for the video. I do keep an eight in one Klein screwdriver in the bag typically. So also in the, in the diagnostics, I have the FLIR camera. This is a great tool for traversing large systems and seeing electrical problems as well as refrigerant circuit problems fairly quickly with the camera. It's really, really useful. Of course, keep some gloves. I have some jumpers here. I've got a K-type thermocouple for my meter, although I hardly ever use it. Schrader core tool. I have various bits for my drill. I have deep sockets, 9 16 half and 7 16 I think, it, yeah, it's right here actually. And I also keep a nine millimeter or 11 30 seconds. This is for the motor screws that are a pain sometimes. They're either mounting screws or even in the larger motors, the, the screws to mount the wires. A couple extensions. I have a locking extension so that I could lock in this wire wheel for cleaning off anything that I may need to clean off, piping, threads, and if I just needed to get in a tighter spot, that way this wheel doesn't go flying into a low earth orbit. I got regular drivers from quarter inch to nine sixteenths in the common sizes. I have a small extension for Phillips bits and I keep number two and uh, number three Phillips. Yeah, this is a number three. I also keep a Torx 20 and a Torx 30 driver for the I think they're called the EV PAPS or the EV PAST EC motors. We run into a lot of the times. Allen keys, I keep the four most common sizes that we use. We got, of course, the 5 16ths and 3 16ths, which work on a lot of service valves and even some electrical connections. And I got the eighth inch, which fits a lot of fan blades. And this, let me make sure I get it right, it is 5 30 seconds. This works on the uh, orifices for the um, rebuildable Sporlin valves. So to like change the orifice out of the valve, it also works on motor pulleys. It works on the Danfoss uh, valves for their adjustment screws. It works on pol Polaris connectors. It works on a lot of things. It's a very, very common size. There's probably more things that it works on that I'm just forgetting. I keep a uh, really small detail screwdriver. I keep this long one because I found that a lot of the multi ones won't fit into some case controllers like Dixell or Danfoss or Corel. I have this shaft taped, you know, just, just in case. And I have verified that it does not connect to the side, although this is by no means an electrical rated tool. I have a small quarter inch and five sixteenths little ratcheting wrench that is magnetic. This is made by Cobalt. It was very kindly gifted to me. You know who you are. It's also super, super useful. Let me not understate that you can put drill bits in the quarter inch side, not, or not drill bits, but drivers in the quarter inch side and it will retain them as well as take out quarter and five sixteen screws just on their own and it will retain them. Unlike some of the others. Keep a very small quarter and five sixteenths double open-ended wrench. I like these double open-endeds because I very rarely have a use for a closed ended wrench since I have all the other drivers. So like when a motor is bolted down in a unit, um, like a belt drive motor, 
or like sometimes even contactors will be screwed down and you need something like this to get on there. So I have this from, from quarter inch all the way to three quarter in the common sizes that I use. So I have four of them. So this is five eighths and three quarter. This is half and nine sixteenths, three eighths and seven sixteenths. And of course the quarter and five sixteenths. I have this um, valve stem tool for adjusting TXV or solenoid manual stems in really tight spots. These are not so easy to find, but when you need it, you need it. It's very useful to have. Of course, got service wrenches, the larger and the smaller for working on any of those type of valves. Have a small stubby screwdriver with just interchangeable. You could put any quarter inch drive bit in there. It has a few extras on it just in case. Right angle adapter for my drill. So if I need to get in a tight spot, I don't need to go get an angle drill for one or two fasteners. Keep a couple wrenches. I keep this thin, um, what is this, an eight inch wrench? I believe this is an eight inch, maybe it's a six. Either way, this one adjusts pretty wide and it's nice and thin so it can get on uh, TXV heads. And this one will also fit on TXV heads. This is like a plumbing wrench um, made by Rigid and it opens super, super wide. So pretty much anything you're gonna run into. Now, of course, if it has lots of torque on it, you might not be able to get it open, but you know, this for a backup wrench along with the other one gets most smaller tasks done. I don't know, of course, a long screwdriver, something I can use as a chisel if need be, because I don't really care about it that much. I could spin condenser fan blades easy with it to see if motors are locked up. Everybody's favorite channel locks, sometimes you just need them. I keep a good crimper. I went a lot of my career without using a good crimper and never felt great about a lot of crimped connections. And I would actually save pieces of wire with factory crimps on them to use if it was for a high current application. But these, they're pretty reasonably priced now, and I feel a lot better about making connections with these versus other options. Of course, I keep a impact driver, typically use it on one of the lower power settings so I don't strip stuff out, but it's just nice and compact, which is the main reason I have this one. And then I just have a, a small case of the miscellaneous parts. I got wire nuts, crimp connectors, Schrader cores, caps, some screws, you know, just the little miscellaneous parts. Of course, it's probably never stocked as well as it should be, and it's not very organized right now, but it's in there. Also, I didn't mention this. This is just a little piece of Sandpaper, mainly for cleaning pipes for these clamps. That's pretty much it. Everything you see here will get me through better than 90% of calls, diagnostic and small repairs. And it's definitely will supplement the larger repairs when I just need to get a couple extra tools to complete like a, like a larger motor change out or whatever. Not only is this what I'm using for market refrigeration right now, it's basically just a slight tweak on what I've been using for a long time as far as just general tools for anything from, you know, light commercial HVAC to some of the more heavier commercial stuff you'll see. Anyway, hope this is helpful and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.